How are we doing today, neighbors? Ian with eTrailer here, and I'm excited to bring you our Hydrostar Trailer Brake Actuator. This one is meant for disc brakes, and we're gonna get into some features and then that install. This electric over hydraulic actuator is gonna be a great option for those who wanna stay away from surge brakes. So instead of having it push against anything that's going to uh, cause the brakes to apply, this is gonna work with your brake controller and proportionally apply the brakes as much to the trailer as you press up in the tow vehicle. It's also going to work with that manual override. So if you want to use just your trailer brakes, and since you got those nice new disc brakes that this is going to be powering, that's going to be a wonderful addition to your camper. I did want to touch base between the two actuator options we've got on our website at the moment. There's a 1,600 PSI, which we're running here for our disc brakes. There's also a 1,200 PSI option, which is going to be for your drum options. Uh, this will run up to a triple axle. We're just running a tandem on this, which is completely fine as well. Uh, but this will go all the way up to that triple axle if need be. Now, the actuator is not going to be the hardest part of the install, in my opinion. You're still going to have to put on the disc brakes to be able to convert those over for this to even work. And if you're running the 1200, of course, that'd be the drum brake conversion if you're going that route. Uh, but with this, we are running the disc brakes and we're going to be tying into an existing seven way. The truck already has a brake controller. So these little things are gonna be things you need to be thinking about when you're hooking this up. You're gonna have to have that seven way. You're gonna have to have the brake controller and you're gonna have to switch over to uh, disc brakes if you're moving to the 1600 PSI version of this. But we'll go through the whole install, I'll walk you through that process, um, and then you can check out the other videos if you wanted to see how to do the disc brakes and the line run and everything there. We did do the line run kit for this, and we'll walk through the whole process of getting this hooked up. And if it's not something after watching this you feel like you want to try to tackle, because it is a very time-consuming process, and lucky for us here at the studio, we're able to take our time and really walk through it. But for DIYers, we'll go ahead and walk through it. For everybody else that doesn't feel like trying to do this yourself, check out Dealer Locator on our website. That's gonna get you a trained professional that'll get all that thrown in. But otherwise, let's get into the install. We will need to find a place for our actuator to live. We're gonna want something level because it does have to be level. We want it also uh, somewhat secured from the elements. It can't be out in the open or stepped on, anything of the sort. So we've got this front compartment here where our batteries live. I'm going to be mounting that right next to that battery box, uh, just using some self-tappers here. And then it actually has the bracket already built into the actuator, so it's not something we need to worry about. But before we place it, uh, you'll want to get your line ran done. So everything going back to your brake system in the rear of the vehicle, you just want to make sure that we can get this fitting here. You'll just remove the red cap and that will thread in. And then the best thing to do is go ahead and get that tightened down with that 3 8 wrench. And I would suggest using a line wrench on those because it'll keep you from accidentally rounding out the edges of that fitting there and snug that down until you feel good resistance. Now as we go to bleed the actuator, you may find that you'd have a leak and that's no big deal. We can just tighten that back up. We're just going to go pretty snug right now. To go over how we've got the wiring set up for the actuator, our situation is going to be a little bit different because we've got an additional breakaway battery box that we've got tied into the system. So that is uh, going to be kind of a little bit different than what your normal actuator is just going to be hooked up to. So I'll break it down as far as how it should be hooked up. We're going to start with the white wire, which we've got that going to a ground eyelet just attached to a self-tapper into the frame, also holding the actuator down. Our blue wire is going to be going to the in-cab controller, so one of the wires of the harness that we ran up to the fifth wheel plate is attached to that in-cab controller from the towing vehicle. Our yellow is going to be at the breakaway switch, so that way if the breakaway switch is ever tripped, this is what sends signal to our actuator. And then last but not least, that black wire there is just going to 12 volt power, which you can either get back here 
or you can tie that in up front at the seven way. Now we'll need to add our fluid to the pump here. So we'll just remove the cap and we're gonna open up a new bottle of brake fluid. You can use either uh, DOT three or four, depending on what you prefer. It will accept either. We're gonna go with three on this particular fill. So I'm just gonna get that poured into the reservoir here. What you can do is use a, a Gatorade bottle or something along the lines and a piece of rubber hose and we're going to put that there on top of the bleed port on the pump to start. Then you can use a 7 16 wrench to break that loose so I'm going to get that in a good position. Get our rubber hose put on top of that and then we're going to actuate the brakes. We've got the valve open and we'll apply that. You'll see the fluid going through the tube. Just run that for a second and close it back up. And what we're looking for is you're gonna see in the hose right now, we've got no bubbles. So when we actuate the brakes, we shouldn't have any bubbles coming out. We should have a nice clear line. And once we've got that, we can start moving our way down the system. Now we're gonna to come to the furthest brake away from the actuator. We're gonna put on our little rubber tube on one of the bleeders, take a 5 16 wrench and we're gonna need somebody at the front of the vehicle either running the towable or in our case, we're using just a portable controller box that we can hook up to. So I'm gonna have Jesse up front helping us and he's gonna go ahead and as soon as I tell him open, he's gonna go ahead and turn the pump on. So I'm gonna go open, all right, and closed and he'll shut that off. Okay, and we're gonna repeat the same process on the bottom bleeder. All right, open. And closed. Okay. And now we've got good clear fluid coming back to this back brake. We're gonna keep moving our way forward, just going through the system. So we're gonna go to that front left now, since that's gonna be our next closest and hop over to the other side, do the right rear and then that uh, right front as well. And that's gonna do for our look at and install of the Hydrostar electric over hydraulic brake actuator for disc brakes. My name's Ian with E-Trailer and I appreciate you watching.